Hello and welcome to Infinity, and also welcome to the third series of the Absolute Beginners course. Although by now, if you followed the previous two series, each of 30 episodes, then you'll probably be something more than a beginner. Nevertheless, what I'm going to do is, is continuing with the principle of going steadily and slowly and explaining things in a bit more detail. So, and also what I'm doing this series is, as much as possible, is doing the pictures, so editing pictures that you've sent in. So this one is from viewer Jeff and it is an old photograph and it's got all kinds of problems on it. It's a family group here, I presume it's a family uh, with three generations and it's uh, probably been, with all these folds in it, has been lovingly carried around in pockets and purses and handed around and so on. If we go into the detail here, if we zoom into this, you start to see even more. Look at the cracks here and so on, where the glaze on the, the thing has gone. There's scr little scratches and all sorts. And if you're going to edit this, one of the first things you do with it is to go to 100%. Because if I go zoom outwards, just control and rolling the mouse wheel, those details start to disappear, but if I hit control and number one, I go to 100%. And now I can see all the details and all the scratches and all these little things which we're going to have to address. So the way that we do that is the classic way of the retoucher is, is two things. One is we put on a add pixel layer down here, or you can always go to layer and new pixel layer up here and so that gives you an empty pixel layer if you turn off the bottom layer it's completely transparent the checkerboard shows that there's it's like it's onto empty space and then I'm going to paint onto here to cover up all of these marks and because I'm painting on a separate layer that means I can go back later on and change all that I can just wipe off bits and add more bits and so on and this is called non-destructive approach. So literally the way to do that, the simple way, is you go down here, right click on there, you can see there's a bunch of healing tools and the one you want here is the in painting brush tool. Then what we want to do here, if I paint on here with this, then it's going to think about it and it's going to try and fix it. And it will fix it if I've got here where it says current layer, then current layer and below, make sure you've got current layer and below because it won't fix it otherwise. It's just trying to look at the pixel layer, but it wants to look at the layer beneath as well. So here we go then. So I can literally paint on the edge here, but there's a thing here with the brush size. Look where I painted here. And you can see that down below, I've got exactly the same pattern because it's basically copied from below up here. So now I've just sort of like duplicated that and I've got to get rid of that as well. So by and large, you want to have the smallest brush possible. And if here you've got a lot of dots, you want to make the brush as small as possible that. So it's going to be around the size that's just going to cover a dot. And with this, you can go smaller and smaller until you're covering it. So around about 15 here. So if I roll the mouse wheel over here, it'll go down to the next whole number, which is 15 pixels, which seems pretty small. But I'm literally going to click on these. I can draw straight lines with it to get rid of lines like this. Where the areas like that, I can sort of like scribble over it because then it's going to see it's not even copied these dots down here. I can just click on those. Where you've got long lines, a good thing to do is click on one end, then hold down the shift key and click on the other end. And then you go, it does the whole line at once. If it's curved like that, click one point, shift click along there and just hold down the shift key and click along the line to get rid of it. I would do whole sections like this at a time. So I do this whole section and then I would move it across and do the next whole section and so on. And just go that in strips all the way down. And you need to be particularly careful with things like the faces and things like that because that's where you look. If you look at a picture with people in, you're going to look at their faces and particularly their eyes. 
So there's a bit there. You can see the detail in this. Of course, it's from an old picture, so it's it's not all going to be super sharp. We've got big things like this. You can go over this a bit at a time, like this, and you know it's the the best way is to use the smallest brush possible. You can also right square bracket to make this a bit bigger. Paint down over this. And it will do it that are large sections, but it may well then copy into here things from elsewhere. So you then got to go back down to the small brush by just type 1 5 for 15 to get back to our small brush and tidy up within that area again. And so it just needs the patience of going over and over and over. The whole picture doing that will take uh, quite a few hours. How do I know? It's because I did it. And so uh, here is one where I put an extra layer, I just called it dots. And now if you zoom into this, if I go control 1 to 100%, you can see here that very largely those lines have disappeared. I can go to that dots point again, I can go to the in painting brush here. I'll keep that down to 15 again. If there's any extra ones here, I can always paint in there. So you have a look over it and dot and so on and just keep on going until you're happy with the result. With the face here as well, maybe there's something we can do here to add a little bit more detail into that. But first of all, I hit Control Zero and just look at this and go, well, they've certainly improved it a lot. But if I go to the levels control here, so I go to adjustments and levels, and I could always also go here to layer, new adjustment layer, and levels here, there it is, or even hit Control L, so I get this. But you notice here the histogram, which shows the amount of light and dark in the picture. So there's a big lump there because on the bottom end, because that's dark. It's not all the way down here because this is not going to black. So I can drag this one up here, and then that puts more black into the picture. And I drag this one down here so that the histogram's still within those lines. Now it goes from dark black to full white, so I've got a lot more black and white rather than a grey and grey picture. And so I can leave that as is there. By the way, this appears at the top here, not underneath, because I went up. If I go to Assistant Manager here, I've got add Adjustment Layer as New Layer, not as Child Layer, and also adding Filter Layer here as New Layer, not as Child Layer. So you'd need to do that beforehand if you want it to appear one above the other, which sometimes I, I tend to prefer. What else can we do here? Well, if I go into the picture here, you can still, there's still a lot of dots and all around the face here. So can we get rid of that? Well, one way of doing that is to blur it. So if I go to this double triangle here, which are the filters, click on that and go up to the Gaussian Blur, which is the standard blur, if you like. I turn this up and look at the dots there. So as I turn that up, see I've got rid of the dots. However, I'm losing the detail in the areas I want to keep sharp. So I'm not going to use that. But I'm going to go back to the blurs here. And there's two blurs here. You can try either of them, the medium blur and the bilateral blur. And those are quite good at preserving edges whilst blurring. I'm going to use the bilateral blur, which is a little bit more detailed because it's got two sliders. The medium's only got one, but this is a bit better to do this. So now I'm going to turn this up here, and you play with these two sliders. One of the things that you can do is just put the some of the tolerance somewhere in the middle, and then turn up the radius, and to see there's a point at which the noise starts to, the unwanted dot starts to disappear, but then say, well, let's try turning down the tolerance and see what happens there. And maybe turning up the tolerance, seeing what happens there. If I can't see too much, maybe I'll bring the radius back down again, try to find that just point at which it's just beginning to knock out the, the dottiness of it. And move this up and down to see what happens. Even try more extreme values, see the dots are coming back in a bit there, so I need to turn that up a bit so I lose those dots. So now I'll bring that back down again. It's literally play with it until you're happy with it. 
Though if you printed it, you'd be unlikely to see that amount of detail. Or if you resized it, because if I go to document and resize here, you can see it's really big. This is 5,448 pixels that way and over 7,000 down here. This is because the original picture was put through a scanner and the scanner was very high resolution, more really than the you could start with there. When you do that, you, what you can also do if you want to is go to document and resize and change the size down to something. I did try it and it didn't make, it wasn't that helpful in this case. But there we go. So there is our picture here. We could also try adding sharpening, but I think it would just start to make this worse because you can still getting dottiness and things over here. However, this method took absolutely forever to do, so is there a quicker way of doing it? Well, the way that we could do that is if I get rid of these, it, but the, you know, it's the idea of using that blur. Can we do that from the, from the beginning? So we'll do a quick experiment to see if that will work. So I go to the filters again here, and I go up and I'll start there with a bilateral blur. And I'll turn this up here a bit, something like this, and play with the tolerance here so that I'm zoom into this. What I can say, I'm losing the dots. If I turn this on and off, see beforehand, lots of dots. Turn that on. I'm losing the dots, but I'm not losing the detail. So I can get up to a certain point there that I'm happy, but I've still got some big dots here. And this is where an extra blur can come in. So I go to the live filters and the median blur. So it's the bilateral blur does the basic stuff, gets rid of most dots. Now what happens if I push up the radius here, but I don't have to go too far, hopefully. There we go. Do you see suddenly happened there? The, the dots disappear, but also I lost detail. So I want to go to just the point where those dots are disappearing. And I've got this here. It, it does affect this a bit more, but I, do, I am getting rid of the dots. It's not going to be good as the first method, but it's not going to be a lot quicker. So now if I control zero to look out here, I've still got these because I did that so far to get to take out those. So now I need to put in that pixel layer, go to the in painting brush, resize that to whatever I want it to be and paint over this, making sure, of course, the current layer and below is done. With this often it's better to do it in small pieces and make sure that the brush just about covers what you want to do and then do that a bit at a time. And that's a quicker way of doing it, not as great result but surprisingly good. Okay, well that's it for now and thank you very much for watching.